I'm doing very good. Thank you so much for calling in. Well, it's, it's, um, it's important to me because I want to get my book out to as many people as possible. I hear you. Uh, I hear the, you. The, the reason being that I want someone or someone to realize that when they go through life like this, that they are not alone. Definitely. Definitely. That's, that's the number one reason I wrote the book. That's awesome. Awesome. Well, I see here it's called Every Story is a Miracle. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. So let's go ahead and get started, okay? Okay, ma'am. Awesome. This is Yaya Diamond, and you're tuned in to Dream Chasers Radio. Man, I am telling you, I'm so, so blessed to have our next guest, our author on the show. His book is called Every Story is a Miracle, and his name is Gary Wilson. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you, Yaya. Awesome. Awesome. I appreciate it. Oh, thank you. And t- okay, okay, so tell me your story. Um, it started back in 1996 or 97 when I was going to work. And for whatever reason, I lost control of my car and I hit a tree. We tried to find out what was wrong with the car, what happened with the car, and we could not find out anything. In the meantime, I was two and a half weeks in a coma. Mm. My my heart stopped, as I was told, three times uh, before they even were able to get me out of the car. And then twice more from uh, from the accident scene to Yale Hospital. I um, it's up to two one ten so I guess you can say that I died five times in a, in a really quick day. Wow. Uh, when I came to, I was totally paralyzed. I could not move anything. And uh, little by little, I was able to um, to move, move a bit. I guess that I was two and a half weeks in a coma. Mm. When I came to, I was totally paralyzed. Little by little, again, I started to move in. I started with, uh, with a pinky. Mm. And um, I finally was doing okay. But then three years later, I was having problems with one leg. And they had to amputate the foot. Six months later, they had to amputate the other one. Wow. Um, and... That's why um, my wife and I were having some problems, and then when I had the, uh, when I had the accident, when all that I was going through, basically she and I decided to do it. Unfortunately, this is my total decision, and um, I was still seeing my boys, two bringing the boys over there to me when I was living in the group home and all that. And uh, this day, um, 20 so many years later, I still have a very close relationship with my boys. And now, Grandpa. Oh. And uh, they just keep thinking every day it comes. Right. Wow. Wow. You know, I mean, things happen, right? To you know, and and it happens, it just happens, and and I I'm happy that you're still here with us, but the adjustments that you had to make, did they inspire this book? Every story is a miracle. Um, they helped me to realize that what happens in life, it's not the important thing. The important thing is what you do about them. Mm. Wow. For example, if you have mugged one day, when you're going to work, if you have mugged, yeah, it's a matter of what you do. Whether, whether you go to the police station or you try to fight, whatever. It's the bad thing is that you have mugged, but the important thing is what you do about it. 
You are so right. You are so right. So this book, you wrote the book. How did this book come about? How did you figure out you really, truly wanted to do this? And did you have help doing this? Um, no, I did it on my own. But what it was that I was, I had to, um, I had to start with, I had to uh, mental, uh, mental therapy. I was just, Right now, day by day, just trying to get my mood swings going, so I wouldn't be so um, uh, uh, so, uh, so sad or so happy. So I tried to just turn off, so I can get my moods out and just get them out of me, get them onto the computer, mm-hmm. and then I had family and friends. Who suggested that I write a book? And I was like, what do you mean write a book? She said, this is what I think. And then I asked friends who would tell me, they can you've been through a lot. Of, I think you were sure. And I had, I had, I had to say that I would share it so other people knew that when they're going through some of these tough things, they're not going through it all. Wow. Wow. You you know, it's such an inspiration to see that, you know, you kept going. I mean, it, it, a lot of people give up. What what made and, you keep going? Well, I had decided to give up. I wanted to give up. And the first thing I thought about were my boys. To this day, they know they are more important to me than anything else. And um, I had the thought about giving up. I said, no, I can't do that. Because I don't want my boys to realize that they have a sick dad who's very six feet under, and that's it. Wow. So I wanted to show them that it's what you do. Again, it's not what happens in life. It's what you do about it. That is so true. That's such, you're such an inspiration. I mean, you know, you know, did you know that you were an inspiration? Did you did you realize that this this whole journey would be to inspire other people to keep going no matter what? Well, it didn't inspire me, but it made me hope that someone somewhere online, one person reads it, like I said, and realizes that they are not alone. Yeah. That's the reason for the book. What have you done to that would have surprised you? You know that you thought you couldn't do, but that you did do. Well, I served almost uh, four years in the Navy, and then I was I just been for three and a half years at the Naval War College up in Newport, Rhode Island. That was all before the accident. And since the accident, I worked for three years at Sears, selling computers. And I'm retiring now from working almost uh, 20 years at the VA hospital. Oh, my gosh. In Western Connecticut. It's just, to me, it's, yes, it's looking at the horizon as you go, but realizing that you have to take one step at a time mm-hmm. successfully to reach that goal. That one step at a time is as important as the goal itself. Right. Wow. Wow. That, that's just, you are a miracle. Well, I, I, I do appreciate it. You say, but I, again, I don't think of myself as a miracle or anything at all like that. I'm just spreading whatever information I have and hoping that if someone somewhere realizes that they're not alone. And if someone somewhere realizes it, then that's the only one that I've ever had. Well, you're definitely doing that. You're definitely doing that. So your book is Every Story is a Miracle. You have your revised edition of This Is Me. Tell me about 
the revision? Um, basically, what I did when I put the uh, the first title, this is me. What I did basically was I take I took my um uh, my uh, my thoughts my my diary and made them into the book. Granted, I didn't do it, you know, I didn't, you know, put it in date by date by date by date. But I took all the inputs, the good and the bad, and I put them in the book. Uh, mm. And I, I self-published it out as this is me. And that was it. Did it scare I you? With, as a self-publisher. And then I spoke with a publishing company, and uh-huh. they suggest, how about if we uh, clear, clean it all up? Now, granted, I do not use any four-letter words or anything like that. Uh-huh. They suggest just maybe cleaning up and putting it all together. Did it scare you to put your diary out there? No, because I... I no, I do not have a. Um, I didn't. I didn't consider it a diary. I just consider it just my thoughts okay. and hopes. Yeah, yeah, I get that. I get that. Wow, wow. Well, I. You know what? I thank you for not giving up. I thank you for not giving up. I thank you that you, now that you, you know, I thank you that you let your life go on and now you have grandchildren. What is that like for you? Well, my, um, this happened several years ago when my oldest son, Craig, got a hold of me and he could call me and he was living at the time down in Tennessee. And he goes, Daddy, are you sitting down? I'm like, well, of course. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we left. And then the one thing, one thing that, that you mentioned that I, I did with my boys is I didn't want them to think of me as an old guy who was stuck in a wheelchair. The way that they know me is that I have, or they have two legs. I have six wheels. That's the only difference. So anyway, so here, here I talk. He goes, that, that, are you sitting down? Oh, yeah. And so he said, well, Gary, uh, well, Dad, he goes, I left some news for you. I'm like, okay, what's up? He goes, uh, do you know, Emily, his ex-friend girlfriend, we later married. Um, Emily is pregnant. Oh, wow. And so, I like, so I didn't say anything. He goes, Dad, are you still there? Are you okay? I said, well, yeah, yeah I'm right. And he said, well, because you're quiet. I said, yeah, I am. I said, do you know what this means? He said, no, who said? I said, you know, this is going to make me a 45-year-old grandfather. <laughs> well, that's, that's that happens. I tell you, I was a young grandma, too. <laughs> and I was like, holy cow. Yep. But, uh, they, my uh, my boys, my, uh, my daughter-in-law, and my grandkids all oh, down in uh, Tennessee, so I don't see them as often as I would like to. But uh, I speak with them occasionally, and uh, and I send down a bunch of gifts and all that stuff, so I try to be involved with them at least a little bit. Mm-hmm. Wow. Well, that is so good. <laughs> That is so good. Well, congratulations. I know it's been a while, but I wasn't around, so I'm going to congratulate you. (laughs) Thank you very much. You're welcome. And wow. Okay, so people can get your book on Amazon. Is there any other places they can get your book? Um, Not that I'm aware of. 
I think you had something, but I don't remember the name. But... Okay. Well, we're um, going gonna to have that information in the description box so people can get a hold of that, okay? Please do, because I just, uh, I used, like I said, I was doing the Navy. After the Navy, I went into the Naval Works House and having top secret information and all that stuff. So I know my brain used to be okay. It's not so much now, but I know it used to be okay. Well, you're just fine to me. <laughs> yep. You're just fine to me. Thank you so much for being on the show, Gary. I appreciate it, Mr. Wilson. It has been such a pleasure having you on the show. And and, and feeding off of your, you know, your love and your compassion for your family, but not only that, for your life. I mean, it's not your legs. It's not your arms. It's you. And it's you it's, that they love. Well, my dad said, I made the decision. And every, every person has the same decision to make. Well, let's just say almost every person. And so I I was laying in the, in the hospital bed and, uh, you know, actually in the rehab bed. And I was like, well, I have a choice. Either I can continue with life or I can go three feet under. And the boys would never know me. My, my boys were the inspiration for me to get better. And that's a great inspiration, definitely. We would not have had your book if you would have decided not to be here with us today. Well, thank you very much, Emma. I appreciate your effort and your company's effort to yeah, help me get the word out. Definitely, definitely. I appreciate it. And, and and let me tell you something. You're an inspiration. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We're going to have that information for Mr. Uh, Mr. Wilson's book in the description box below so that you guys can go ahead and check that out because every story is a miracle. I want to thank you guys again so much for tuning in. And don't forget to dare to be different. Until next time, guys. Bye. Bye.